Welcome to the Athletics YouTube page. I'm your host, Andrew Schlecht. With me, Zach Harper. Zach, big news, and it's not yeah. playoff related. What? It's Damian Lillard. Oh. He doesn't like the way that fans are responding on Twitter. So does that mean that he's on his way out? It doesn't mean thoughts? he's on his way in. I'll tell you that. He's upset. <laughs> he's maybe been moving towards this since May. You know, yeah. maybe it's been, it's not just a recent thing. Maybe the old disreaction to this news is uh, is a little bit of a Trojan horse on the way out rather than the way in. And so I think you're looking at a displeasure with the front office, a displeasure with ownership, and an opportunity to maybe find greener pastures. And it seems like a good time. We have lots of new teams in the conference finals right now. He could. This could be a league-altering move. Like This could change a franchise really easily, I feel like. It's a top 10 to 15 guy, however you want to categorize him. He's the clutchest player in the NBA this year. He's the clutchest player since he joined uh, the NBA back in 2012. Like This guy is as, as franchise-changing as anyone available, for sure. So we cover the NBA, and with that, <laughs> we make fake trades. That's yeah. That's what we do. <laughs> so we've got four trades for you. Here's the first one, Zach. Okay. The Pelicans, Ooh. who are... And the legal like this, the league is always wanting the Pelicans to be relevant. So here we go. Yeah. Brandon Ingram, Jackson Hayes, and three first-round picks for Damian Lillard. <sighs> okay, I like where the he- I like where your head's at with this, right? I like where the starting point is for this. But may I ask you, what did the what did the Pelicans get for Drew Holiday? Wasn't it like control of like five draft picks with the Milwaukee Bucks? This is so true. At- at minimum, I need that back because no offense to Drew Holiday, who I'm a big fan of. Yeah. Damian Lillard is a lot more important than Drew Holiday. And by the way, you screwed up by setting the precedent for what all these draft picks need to be for players. So I need at least that in terms of draft compensation. Then not only do I need Brandon Ingram, I'm assuming everybody except Zion Williamson is on the board. I want Ingram. Yeah. I want Hayes. I want Nikhil Walker Alexander or Alexander Walker, whichever. Alexander I think Walker, it's Alexander yeah. Walker. Uh, yeah. I want both of those guys. I want the fake one and the real one. I want all those guys. <laughs> I want Najee Marshall. I need every good young player. Uh, Kyra Lewis, like, I need all these dudes. All yep. those dudes are a starting point for me giving you Damian Lillard because you know what's going to happen when you get Damian Lillard and Zion Williamson? You're finally going to make the playoffs. You're finally going to get where the league wants you to be, which is on the national stage where we cannot avoid it if we tried. So I need everything you've got that's not Zion. I'm not going to lie. I want to see it. I just want to see it happen. It'd be fun, I, man. It'd be I, so I, much fun. Plus, you know, you get Dame down in New Orleans. That's just a good vibe. Like, I'm, I'm ready for it. It really is. Trade two to the Knicks. Now that no. the Knicks are good, we have no. to get we have to get the good <laughs> players, right? That's how it All works. Right. All right, hit me with the trade. Okay. <laughs> Obi Toppin. Okay. This is a bad start. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you started with Obi Toppin. Okay. Mitchell Robinson. Uh-huh. Kevin Knox. Okay. And and you name the amount of picks. <laughs> okay. Okay. First, I need control of your picks, right? Every other year is yeah. what you can do eight years out. Um, I want all those unprotected. I want uh, swaps in the in the other years where we can't just flat out get your picks. I want swap options for yeah. that. Yep. Uh, but here's the thing. If you are the New York Knicks and you want me to give you Damian Lillard, we don't start this conversation without R.J. Barrett being involved. And that may you be don't, a You don't like starting it with Obi Toppin? You don't like the Obi <laughs> Look, Toppin conversation? I may or may not have made a prediction preseason that Obi Toppin was going to win Rookie of the Year. I might not be the right person <laughs> to throw this at, right? But I get that. But look, we can't have that conversation without RJ Barrett. Like, I just that's not going to happen. Yeah. I'll send them to okay. I'll send them to the Lakers. I'll send them to Miami. I'll send them to anywhere he wants. I'll send them to you know to Spain. I'll send them anywhere. But I'm not sending him to the Knicks unless R.J. Barrett's involved. And let me throw, I'm going to throw this one at you, too. Emmanuel, quickly. I need them both because I need a point guard back at this point. I'm losing my point guard. And so that has to be the starting point. And I can't imagine the Knicks would do that plus all the draft capital needed. But I'm sorry, you offering me Kevin Knox is not going to get it done. <laughs> you don't like all of our former lottery picks? You don't like that? I love the Knicks tape, but nobody likes the Knox tape, okay? It's not a good thing. Trade three. Oh, all Zach. Right. Zach, I come to you with a heavy heart offering this trade. Okay. Uh oh. Ben Simmons. 
<laughs> just two words. That's it? Just Ben Simmons? Let's just let's just start there. Can we just start there for just a second, please? Okay. All right. Um, here's the thing. All right. The Ben Simmons conversation is out of control at this point, yeah. right? I've I've seen people wondering like what would anybody even want? I got asked on multiple radio spots, is there even a trade market for Ben Simmons? Yes, there is. You know why? Because teams like Minnesota, teams like Sacramento, teams like Cleveland, they all exist and they all yeah. need good players. Ben Simmons could be this player for the rest of his career, not get an ounce better, play for the next nine years, and he's going to end up with 16,000 points, 8,000 rebounds, 8,000 assists. Two other players in NBA history have done that. LeBron James, Jason Kidd. Like, he's good, and he's going to get some all-defense. He might get a defensive player of the year here and there. Like, Ben Simmons is a good player. Now... It's not ideal that he's afraid of the fourth quarter, right? Not ideal that he's afraid of Trey Young around the basket. Like, none of these things are ideal, but Ben Simmons is a valuable trade asset and a great starting point for if I'm, if I'm asking you for Damian Lillard. Here, I have Ben Simmons. He's under contract for the next few years. Here you go. Like, let's start with that. But if I'm Portland, again, I have to be greedy because there will be a market for Damian Lillard. It's not like you're the only suitor. And so yeah. I'm going to want Tyrese Maxey. I'm going to want mm -hmm. a couple of draft picks. Like I'm going to ask for everything because in me trading Damian Lillard, I'm giving up everything that's good with my franchise and I need a starting point. And so Ben Simmons, there is a market for him. I get it. He's a, he's a scared little guy when it comes to the fourth quarter, but he's better than people are giving him credit for still. He's got some things to work out, but I still need a little bit more. If, you know who said? You know who should say no to this trade? Who's that? Ben Simmons. Ben I, Simmons should ben Simmons, say no to this. Trade. I am petrified of this because you're replacing yeah. Mister Fourth Quarter. You're replacing this franchise icon in Portland, yeah. and you don't want to shoot the basketball in the fourth quarter versus the guy who wants every shot in the fourth quarter. I am petrified of this. I. If I'm Ben Simmons, I almost want like a bad trade to happen for me so that it's just kind of like you're playing with house money if you're the other team, and I can just be me. I don't want the pressure. Now, if you're ben, let me ask you a question. If you're Ben Simmons, all right? Now, this may be rude, but if you're Ben Simmons and I say, hey, I can trade you to Portland, you're going to replace Damian Lillard. Mr. Fourth Quarter, like you said, Mr. Fourth Quarter, we know what your issues are, but you got to go in there, and it's your turn. It's your era in Portland. Or I say, hey, I'm going to send you the Kings. Oh gosh! Which one? Do, which one do you prefer if you're Ben Simmons? <laughs> I think I prefer Kings, just because the results the don't pressure's matter. Off, man. No, the results don't matter. expects you to lose, right? <laughs> People kind of respect Harrison Barnes now, right? Why? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Kings got a ring. Yeah. Kings. You All just right. got to be. You just got to be not terrible, and your and your your stock cannot be higher with the Kings. Yeah. <laughs> Trade number four. Okay, this okay. is the spiciest one. Oh, okay. The Warriors getting back oh, in. Okay. All right. Andrew Wiggins, James Wiseman, right. Jordan okay. Poole, Pascal. Okay. Yeah. Probably the seven and fourteenth picks in this draft. Okay. So like we're going like we're going. This That's is a real. lot, man. That's a lot. This is yeah. this is real. And it's for Dame and Nurkic coming back. Ooh. I love this trade. Now yeah. it's gonna it's going to create some log jams here, right? Because can you have, I don't care how good Steph and clay are. Like, can you have a five man unit of Steph, Dame, clay, Draymond and Yusuf Nurkic? I don't know if that works now. A lot of shooting, right? Yeah. But Dame sort of needs to be in a rhythm with the ball in his hands, mm -hmm. right? Like it, not totally. He can play off ball. He doesn't have to do it much. Um, and they've tried doing it with, like, CJ gets to take the point here. So I get sure. that. Um, but, man, like, as good as Steph is off the ball, as good as Clay is off the ball, somebody needs the ball, right? And yeah. so there's always that issue of, like, does, do, you know, are there enough basketballs for this team? Here I'm like, is there enough I need the ball for this team? Because everyone can be so selfish, but is, you really want to put Dame – in the in the center of that or do you want to put Steph in the center of that and have all these guys plus I don't know if I like the idea of Nurk and Draymond together um, defensively it could be good offensively you might be sacrificing a lot there's a lot of yeah. 
good things there. But this also feels like when you put together a team on on 2K, right? And you're just like, oh, I can get this guy. Oh, I can get this guy. And then you start playing and you're like, I can't really get everybody the ball. I want to get the ball. This is kind of, you know, it's not as fun. It sounds great on paper. Then you start playing and it's like, ah, man, this guy's numbers are going to suck. And it's because I keep giving the ball to these two guys and everything. And now I got to make sure I get Draymond, his numbers and all this stuff. I don't know if that works, but it's weird. It's a yeah. massive trade, and I love me some massive trades. Plus, for Portland, all right, Wiggins is not ideal, right? Yeah. It's not ideal. James Salary. Wiseman. Yeah. Yeah, James Wiseman, still a fantastic prospect. I know people mm -hmm. were a little disappointed with it. He's good. He's really yeah. good. Uh, yeah. Poole, a lot of people are very high on. Pascal is a great value guy as a second rounder. Plus, you're getting a couple of picks in this draft, and there's a lot of good between 1 and 14 in this draft or 7 and 14 in this draft. So I like the starting point. If I'm Portland, I'm probably saying I'd like a couple more picks down the road. You know, yeah. maybe a 2022, maybe a 2024, maybe whatever you got down the road. I need some of that. Yeah, it's. A, I think it's a, a nice deal for Portland. I just wonder, the Warriors have been so obsessed with bridging the gap between this team and like the next version of the Warriors. I yeah. just don't know if they're willing to give that up. And a lot of it will probably depend on the evaluation of this draft. If they don't like who's there at seven right. and they can't figure out a way to trade up, then I think this is like a, this is a great option for them. And like they instantly, if they get to the fourth quarter and it's a close game, it, would there be a scarier team outside of maybe I mean, the that's next? tough. Here's what I would say though. If I'm, if I'm Washington and I see this deal about to go down, do I say, hey, guys, you can have Bradley Beal. <laughs> you're Bradley Beal. You know, you're giving up those picks. Who would you rather have? Who do you, who do you want? I think it's better balanced if it's Bradley Beal, but yeah. I don't know. It's still, I mean, what? Like, all right, I'm picking between Bradley Beal and Damian Lillard to put next to Stephen Clay. Like, can you have <laughs> sp splash triplets? You know, it doesn't like, it's a, it's a splash like Hydra. I don't know what it is. It's something, but it's something good. It also may be just uh, a disaster in the waiting if, if it doesn't work out and then everyone's just clowning these guys constantly. Yeah. I'm a little tired of the Warriors' exceptionalism. Just let them go down in their James Wiseman flames. I'm, I would I'm like done. to see Joe Lacob spin a few bad years in a row. I, I, yes. I'm conflicted because I want Steph to be great. I want Steph to be successful. Yeah. I hate the, in, the internet conversation around Steph Curry. But there's part of me that looks at Joe Lacob and I'm like, Spin this light years, like you know, try to try Please. to fill up the chase Please. center with with this 